up guys welcome back to another video i'm so pumped to film this video for you guys and i'm so excited that i had to make sure i was looking fresh just got a fresh cut from my dude caliph otherwise known as caselay i've been cutting my hair for two years now crazy to think about that he actually used to work at this boutique fancy place in midtown now he switched out to be the manager at this great clips in the suburbs so i'm getting the same haircuts for like 30 bucks less cannot complain about that all right let's get this rolling we're going to talk about gen z today generation z i'm 24 years old i was born in 1999 oh my god big freaking b around me get out of here but i was born 1999 so i'm part of generation z and there's a lot of stereotypes about my generation most of them are negative like we're lazy we don't work hard all we care about is money we like to blow money more than we like to save it we're addicted to our phones and social media i mean there's a lot of them and honestly they're not wrong they're pretty accurate so today i'm gonna do my best to break down and cover everything i gotta say there is a ton that we're gonna unpack about generation z hope you enjoy another video today let's go All right, Generation Z, made up of people born between the mid-1990s to the early 2010s. I think it's a pretty crazy, pretty unique era, made up of mostly the technological advances and the social media and the internet. Those in itself is what separated the millennials before this new generation, where quite literally we were born with a phone in our hand. We were literally born with the internet where everything is quite literally at, at our fingertips. We're able to access anything we want to at any point in time, anywhere in the world. It's, it's ridiculous. And all this technology is the main argument of why older generations think that Gen Z is so stupid. And this, I, I think I pretty much agree with. Where, for example, when you're in school and you don't know the answer to a question, most homework answers are posted out there somewhere. On Quizlet or Chegg, like I used Quizlet for like history class. I used Chegg to help me with my math homework. When I didn't want to read a book for English class, I would look up the Spark Notes, right? It's like a, a two minute summary of a 50 page chapter. All this information is out there, makes it so easy for this generation to not work as hard as previous generations who didn't have these resources to complete essentially the same tasks. And don't even get me started on chat GPT. I do think it's incredible how we can develop and create something like ChatGPT. I mean, AI is, is, is really, really cool. But you can't deny that it makes it way too easy to do so many things. Like if you're in school, you can tell ChatGPT, hey, write me an essay on the Revolutionary War, whatever you need an essay on, and it'll crank out a full one page or two page essay for you to turn into the class and the teacher probably won't even notice. For this YouTube video, I could, on ChatGPT, say write me a YouTube video script for Generation Z, and up pops a bunch of notes on stuff I could literally say word for word in this video, and you guys would have no idea. It's just making it so easy for this generation to, to do that kind of stuff. So yes, I think this generation is probably, at least it's getting there, the dumbest, the lowest IQ, the least general knowledge of all time. All this technology has also taken a hit on people's mental health, I think, as well. So starting with kids, I see kids in like second grade now having cell phones, scrolling TikTok and Instagram more than they are playing outside with their friends. That's not good from the start. And do your own research, but there's a lot of articles out there, a lot of people saying that Generation Z is the loneliest, the most depressed, and the most stressed of any generation of all time. And that's largely due to social media. Social media is, is wild in the fact that everyone at any time across the world has access to your information. On Instagram, anyone in the world can view your Instagram posts. On YouTube, anyone in the world can view my YouTube videos. So I think because of that, there's so much pressure for us to maintain that online presence in this society. And with all this internet, there's loads and loads and loads of different information being pushed on you at all times and because there's so much of it out there you just generation g just gets like so confused and so lost and when someone gets so lost they get depressed and they get anxious and that's crazy to think about because in today's world you can talk to anyone at any time through text you know through this thing right here you can call or text or or dm someone on instagram at any time but the more time you spend on this the less time you have actually interacting with people out there in the real world. So when that happens, you get extremely lonely. A lot of people also say that Generation Z is so soft 
and so sensitive and you know, so light so no one can take a joke anymore which I agree to an extent you know, I, I joke around a lot I'm a jokester I love to have fun so I do have to wash my mouth a little bit more so now than you know in the days prior so those are the negatives of being a Gen Z -er. now let's move over to the positives because despite all of that I think there is a lot of cool things about living and being part of this generation Just drove a half hour to pick up some Panda Express. This is the very best bang for your buck you can get for 10 bucks at a fast food spot. One, this stuff is probably healthier than like McDonald's and Wendy's. And two, I mean, every combo of McDonald's and Wendy's and other places like that are already 10 bucks. For 10 bucks, you get the whole thing of food here. Same order every time, got the white rice with the grilled teriyaki chicken. It's a little healthier than fried stuff. And then the OG orange chicken. Mm, never get tired of this. All right, there's three things I love about Gen Z. Number one is that we've made use of this tech era and made some really cool content. Through YouTube, I'm able to be creative and make these cinematic vlogs to put my life on camera and, and relive my memories through video. TikTok has blown up over the last couple of years, so there's thousands of people making some sweet videos there as well. This content creation is called wasn't a thing like 10, 15 years ago, so I think Gen Z were the first people to start it. And related to this is new ways to make money that Gen Z is taking advantage of. I monetize my YouTube videos, for example, so I make a little bit of money off them, but there's so many people out there making a full-time living off YouTube or off TikTok, for example, even off Instagram. The internet has given Gen Z specifically a ton more ways to make money that didn't exist like before the internet. So like selling products, selling services, e-commerce, wholesaling, drop shipping. I mean, all the, you can do real estate is done all entirely online now. So you name it, there's so many more ways to bring in cash nowadays and Gen Z is making use of that. Number two, Generation Z has said, screw that toxic corporate work culture that has been around for a hundred plus years. Gen Z is pushing back on this by getting companies to offer more remote work. Uh, working from home is amazing. Gen Z sets boundaries at work since they focus on their life outside of work more so than their actual work. So no one is working 20 hours, 30 hours a week extra overtime without any additional pay. No one is answering emails on the weekend. No one is taking phone calls after six o'clock Monday to Friday. These boundaries at work did not exist before from older generations. So this has at least helped force companies to change the way they operate, assuming they want to keep their employees. As a result, wages have gone up a little bit. They have gone up. I mean, it doesn't seem like it, but they have gone up. Not a lot, not as much as inflation, but they have gone up. And this is part of the reason for that. And even in the post COVID world, a lot of companies out there are still offering fully remote jobs, or at least hybrid is a new norm where it's like a couple days in the office, a couple days work from home, assuming you work a job that allows you to work from home. And number three, as I start to get ready to go out, is that Gen Z appreciates the time they have on this earth a lot more than previous generations. And this is where that stereotype of blowing money comes into play. We as Gen Z, we love spending a lot of money on vacations. We like spending money on going out to eat at fancy restaurants. We like spending money on a nice car when we're still in our early 20s. We like, uh, buy, we like blowing hundreds of dollars on Morgan Wallen country concert tickets like I did last week. Because we love to have fun. Life is so pointless if you're not actually enjoying it. Back in the day, the culture was work, 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 work from the time you graduate school to the time you're 65 and retire and then you have some free time we don't want to live a boring life until the time we retire and I'm not saying just blow all your money because that is dumb but the point is yes Gen Z I don't think we save as much money as previous generations I mean how can we I mean everything's so freaking expensive nowadays anyways but we do I think have a lot more fun and we actually appreciate the time we have on this earth right now what up dog I'm nice. how are you doing not too bad, bro. Yourself? Yeah. I was driving from Marietta. Not too bad, huh? Yeah. Okay, cool. There's first, no traffic. First time on the channel, huh? You, you've had some cameos. First time talking on the channel, for sure. It's nice to meet you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a beer, bro. Cheers. Ching, ching. Where are you from? Or, I guess, what's your name? Where are you from? And what do you do? I, um, I am Rashad. I am from Gainesville, Florida. Okay. Um, UF. Florida Gators. Yeah. Go Gators. Any Gators out there? I, um, I work in tech. I have uh, been in tech for about four or five years now. Mm -hmm. And what was the first ever video you watched of mine? Uh, you remember? 
I actually watched the very first one was the one that you did a year ago when it was an apartment hunting video. Mm -hmm. It's um, you used to do the ones where you have a little face in the bubble. Yep. And then uh, you would go and like just talk through the recorders that you did. Absolutely, before. absolutely. Yeah, I did a bunch of those apartment touring videos. If you haven't watched them, go back and watch them. They're pretty good. But yeah, you've been subscribed for probably six or seven or eight months. Commented yes. a bunch of my videos. I said, dude, just hit me up on Instagram. Let's let's go out and grab a beer. And fast forward, you know, a couple months. Chilling here, having a beer with this nice view. What do you think of the view, huh? Uh, amazing, yeah. amazing view. I'm jealous. That's why I got the place, man. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. If you have not followed me on Instagram yet, make sure you do that. Here's my handle right now. Shoot me a follow. Shoot me a DM while you're at it. Why not? In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed my summary of Generation Z of the good, the bad, and everything in between. I think it's impossible to explain the entire generation in an 11 minute YouTube video, but I think I did a pretty good job of explaining what I personally seen and what I believe about my generation. So I really hope you enjoyed another video today as much as I did making it. If you did, make sure you drop me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Also subscribe to my channel if you haven't because I drop a new video every single Monday that you don't want to miss. See you next Monday.